Hello and welcome to this lecture, where we'll be adding a service layer to our blog application. A service layer consists of various services that expose functionality. For instance, we could have a user service, which contains functionality related to users, such as adding or removing users. There are many benefits of using a service layer, but I'm just going to highlight a few in this lecture. One of the main benefits is that the functionality within the service is independent of the context in which the service is used. As an example, imagine that we have a feature that creates a new blog post within a blog service. If one day, for whatever reason, we have to add an API to our system, we can easily reuse the blog service within our API. This means that we can reuse all of the logic associated with adding a blog post without duplicating any of it. If, on the other hand, we had written all of our logic within a controller action, we would have to copy all of this logic into our API, which would result in code duplication and a system that becomes difficult to maintain. A service layer also makes the application easier to test because the business logic is isolated from the context that it's used within. So our tests do not need to simulate HTTP requests and the like. These were just a few benefits of using a service layer, but I would definitely recommend that you try to do this within your applications, because your architecture will be more robust. It might not be necessary for a simple and small application, but I'll leave that up for you to decide if it's appropriate to your particular use case. Either way, I'll show you how to add a service layer to Send Framework now. Let's begin by creating a service directory within our module. I'm going to add a block service interface first. The reason why I add an interface is that throughout our controllers will be using this interface, such that we're not coding against a specific implementation of a service. If, for instance, we wish to change our implementation of the service, then we do not need to update all of our controller actions, because they use the methods defined in our interface. This is not strictly necessary, but it does add some flexibility to our architecture. So let's define a method within this block service interface. We're going to add a save method to add a new post. And it will take our entity as the only argument. And let's just document this quickly. Saves a block post and it returns the post that was added. Next, I'm going to add a class that implements this interface. So I'm going to call this block service impl. And this, and this is a convention that you might have seen if you have programmed in Java. So let's implement our block service interface. And I'm going to use PHP Storm to generate a stop for us. So in here, this is where we'll have to implement the logic that saves a post. For now, I'm just going to write a to do save post because we'll get back to the concrete implementation later on. Now we're just going to set up our application to use this service layer. So let's make sure that we can actually fetch this service from the service manager. So we're going to go in the service.config.php within the config directory in our module. And this is where we can add services to the service manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the service as an invocable. And remember that an invocable is simply a class that can be instantiated directly. 
And I can do this because our service does not rely on any other objects to be injected into it. We can just instantiate it directly. So I'm going to give the invocable the name of block backslash service backslash block service. So this is the name that we're going to use when requesting or retrieving the service from the service manager. And I'm using the namespace here to avoid collisions with other modules. So here as the value, we just write the fully qualified path to our class. And here I'm going to write, write the block service impl class, because this is the class that has to be instantiated when retrieving the service. Next, let's go ahead and modify our controller to so using this service that we have just created. So now I'm going to retrieve it from the service manager. And within a controller, as long as we extend the abstract action controller, then we have a method called get service locator, which gets us an instance of a service locator, which technically speaking is going to be the service manager. This exposes a get and a has method. We're going to use the get method for now. And here we can just add the key to our service that we want to retrieve. So going back to our service configuration, we are just going to use this key because this is the name of our service. And we're going to paste it in here. So this will return an instance of our block service impl class. So let's just make sure that we have intelligence here because when retrieving an object from a service manager, your IDE doesn't know which type of object is returned. So let's write block slash service slash block service. So here we're going to code up against our interface as you can see. So here we're completely independent of which class that implements this interface. We're just using any class that implements this interface because in that case we know that we have the functionality that we need. So let's call our save method on our block service here. And as you can see it takes a post entity as its argument. And we have an entity available because we have bounds one to the form. So this is all we need in order to use our service. So whenever a form is submitted and it passes validation, then we'll be invoking our block service. More specifically, this method here and the post entity that was bound to the form will be passed along. So here we can do any logic associated with saving a post. But we'll get back to this in a later lecture. So for now, this is all we need.